Give God praise all in. Put the code in. It's okay. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody give him a praise in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, you just begin to worship, Minister Charles. We love you, God. Hallelujah. Just worship Thank God. You. Listen, this isn't a performance. Go ahead and worship him. Amen. Because he's mighty. Because he's able. Thank you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. We want to start out with this song. Amen. How many want the praises of God to rise in this place? Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise.
ready. One more time, everybody. Let the glory of the Lord break. Let the glory. this place let's praise the name of Jesus he's worthy to be praised hallelujah pastor Halls if you would lead us before we go into our worship song thank you father Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory God. to your name. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day and yes. a brand new year. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to make it in on the first Sunday. Yes, sir. Of the year. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, we don't take it for granted. And God, talk to him right yes. now. Yes, Lord. We just pray, pray, pray that you will rain down in this place. Knowing your presence is already here, but Lord, we invoke your presence. We ask you now, Lord, to have your own way in this place. Loose every bound, break every yoke, God. Whatever that need to be destroyed, God, we pray now that you will destroy and reveal what need to be be, what need to be built, God. We pray now that you will build it. And God, we pray for every heart and every mind, every soul that's in the place. And God, we just thank you for their presence. Thank you for their family. Thank you for their going and their coming, God. Yes, thank Lord. you, God, for bringing them safe. Thank you for keeping us, Lord, yet in our right mind. Thank you, Jesus. We know where we are. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your goodness yes, this morning. God, there's nothing better than you. And God, we just thank you for your salvation this morning. Thank you for loving us, God. Caring for us when we did not care for ourselves. Thank you for loving us when we did not love ourselves, God. Thank you, God, for saving us and filling us up with your Holy Spirit. Now, God, have your way in this place. Have your way in the man of God. That the word of God would go forth, God like a mighty hammer. And God, tear down that petition and the wall that Satan have built up. We pray now that you will break down that petition. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. And God, Father. we just pray for a new move this morning. A new, a new direction, God. Thank you. In the way you will have us to go. Help us to set aside every way. And every sin, God. That's so you let me set us. And God, help us to look forward to those things which is above and not those things which is beneath. God, we love you, God. Yes. Forgive us for our sins, our faults, and our failures, God. 
And God, we just thank you for your word this morning. Yes. God, we realize that we're keeping us, that we're leading and guiding us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we ought to get a little radical this morning. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. If you ever been a time that you need to get radical, now is the time. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says salvation is more near than it once was. Oh, my God. I feel the presence of God in this place, man. Listen, yes, Lord. listen, listen. I don't care what's troubling you. I don't care what's got you. Listen, I don't care what got your mind in another place. Don't worry about that. Yes, sir. Anything you don't have no control. Oh, don't worry about it. Life is in God. Come on. You yes, ought to Lord. show him sign. God is not dead. Come on. We you to sing that song. God is not dead. He's alive. Yes, Lord. Somebody say I'm alive. I'm alive. Somebody say I'm alive. I am alive. Somebody say I'm alive. I am alive. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are alive this morning. Hey. The first Sunday of a brand new year. And I give God glory and honor. Hallelujah. One more time. Come on. If you're expecting great things this year, go ahead and advance and just lift your hands and tell hey. the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a heart and a mindset that's thank receptive. You of what God has in store for you. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our hands and give God glory and honor and praise, not with lip service, but with service from the heart, that he can be pleased with our worship this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be pleased, Lord. Listen. You ready?
is so good. If you know it, congregation, shout, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah, Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice. Now, I don't know what you're going to do, but I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because he has made me glad. He has made me glad. And I will rejoice in this day and in the Lord Jesus, Thank you. because he has made me glad. Amen. Listen, there's no place I'd rather be right now than in the house of God on this first Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this first Sunday Amen. in January of 2024. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, I want to give God the praises today that he is due. Thank you in my life and you know what even with the one tongue I have if I had 10,000 it's not enough what we said I think last week if we had a million it's not enough because God has shown himself mighty in all of our lives even through the tragedies that we have faced God has still shown himself even through the sicknesses that many has faced God has shown himself even through the loss of loved ones, God has still shown himself to be mighty in our lives. Amen? Amen. If you lost a job, whatever it is, he is mighty. Somebody shout, God is mighty. God is mighty. And I don't know what he's doing in your life. 
But last year, God did some great and amazing things for me. He really did. And my family. He's kept us when we didn't want to be kept sometimes. Anybody ever been in that situation before where he kept you? Hallelujah. He's kept us. He's kept us. He's kept us. He's never, ever left us. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. God is so awesome. God is so mighty. He's so powerful. He's so just, just sovereign. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. We're going to sing a song in a minute. Amen. God is doing something wonderful in us. Is he doing anything wonderful in you? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right to cut corners. It's all right. Amen. It's all right. Amen. When we're in these situations, cut on the cross. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. The key is there. Thank you, Father. Lord God is so wonderful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Y'all give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, give him a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're amazing. Hallelujah, Lord. Wonderful God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping Thank me, God. Thank you. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 
awesome in me. God is doing something awesome in me. Something awesome and incredible. Only he can get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, come on, God is doing something wonderful. God is doing something wonderful in me. Come on, let's sing it. God is, God God is, is doing, doing something, something wonderful, wonderful in me. Something awesome. Something awesome and incredible. Well, he will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, he is. Listen to this. Oh, so wonderful. So wonderful. So marvelous. So marvelous. So beautiful. So beautiful. God is doing it on the inside. God is doing it on the inside. God is doing it on the inside. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you, praise team. Come on, give it up. Give it up for God. God is doing some wonderful things on the inside. Hallelujah, Lord. Many of us need God to work in our life. We've been through the storm, as Sister Cockdale say. We've been through the rain. But how many of us can say we made it? Come on. Amen. Listen, listen. I got dish rags wetter than this at the house. Come on, somebody. We don't need to be dry in the house of God, not on a first Sunday of the year. 
Come on, you're still looking for 51 more. Hallelujah! When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, Brother Lewis, my soul cries hallelujah, and I'm thankful and grateful to God for saving me. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Lord, I worship you right now, God. I worship your holy name. Thank you, Lord. I worship your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I worship your holy and righteous name. There's a song. <laughs> she probably remembers this. Sister Shanice used to sing worship song I think she sang it once or twice but it's such a beautiful song and I I, I want to sing just a little bit of it before I give observations but I don't want to miss the words because I'm good at that amen especially if it's been some years that we've sang it thank you Lord thank you Father it's by Norman Hutchins and I don't know what your desire is and where you desire to be. But the song just simply says, Lord, I want to dwell in your presence. That's where I long to be. Now, last year, don't get me wrong, I was in his presence. You were in his presence. But how many of us know that we can go deeper into the presence of God? Come on, somebody. Some of us just may be at the entrance of the presence. Some of us may be in the middle of his presence. But I desire to be in the presence of God. And David said in Psalm 27, 4, church, and I pray that this becomes all of our testimony and desire. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And listen, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of of the Lord all the days of my life. He said to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David said I want to know God. I want to learn more about my God. But the song said Lord I want to dwell in your presence that's where I long to be And Lord, I want to bask in your spirit. That's where I long to be. Remember that, Chinese? Then it says this, I give you permission to live in my heart. Lord, I surrender. The ladies talked about surrender yesterday. Surrender every part to be in your presence is all that I ask. That's where I long to be. That's where I long to be. That's where I long to be. Lord, I want to know you in your power. That's where I long to be.
Say, Lord, you're my strength. Oh, come on. Can we say, Lord, you are my strength. Lord, you're the strength of my life. to know this is from my heart.
you give me in times of a storm. You are the source of my strength. Lord, you are the strength of my life. I lift my hands in total praise <laughs> to you. I will lift mine eyes to the hills, knowing my help. Come on and worship God right there. Lord, my help has come. It's coming from you. Your peace you give me in time of a storm. You of my strength, Lord, you are, you're the strength of my life, and I lift my hands in total, total praise, Lord, to you. but I lift my hands in a total praise to God. I remember hearing an old lady say in church years ago, you don't know what the Lord has done for me. Amen. 
you don't know how the Lord blessed my soul. I know we serve the same God, but the way he touches us is different. Oh, I, I'm, I'm a living witness right there. The way he touches us is different. No touch is ever the same. Woo! <laughs> what he means to me, he may not mean to you. Even though he is that, he might not mean it. Maybe you haven't gone through it yet to, to get to that point. But I know God is my all in all. And that's why, you know what, when it comes down to praising God, when it comes down to worshiping God, I, I, I can get mental. Y'all, uh, bro, Warren, I, I, can, I, I can get totally crazy when it comes down to worshiping God. Now, I act like I got some sense around people. But when God's in the midst, you can, you can label me, you can call me whatever you want, but I'm going to lose it for him because he lost it for me. He did. He, and, and you know what, Mike, I'm not the only one he lost it for. He lost it for every one of us in here. What did God lose? Well, he, he, he didn't necessarily lose it, but he gave it, but it was still a loss to him. Ah. What did he what, what did he what did he what did he suffer loss of? For God so loved the world. Here it is, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, if, if that's all I said today, I just preached. That's it. That's the right there, that's the theme of the gospel. That's the theme of the gospel right there. God gave his son, Jesus, to die for us. And you know what? Whether it's the first Sunday, whether it's the second Sunday in the year, whether it's the 31st Sunday in the year, whether it's the 48th Sunday in the year, I'm not going to let a day go by without being radical for God. And, and, and the reason I spend so long on the organ is because I'm trying to get most of you to be more radical. Mm-hmm. I try to give you time to really think about what God has done for you. If you're in here today, then you are not a, how would I say this? You're not an, an immortal statistic. If you're sitting in here, you're not, you're not an immortal, you're not a mortal statistic, excuse me, you're not dead. That's where I'm at. You are an immortal statistic because you're still here. But you're not a mortal statistic. You have not suffered mortality. You, if you're sitting in here. So if you're in here, you got some breath going on in your body. And you ought to do something with that breath other than talk. Come on, somebody. You ought to do something with that breath other than breathe. You ought to praise the Lord with that breath. Because he said everything that's got it ought to what? Praise me. Come on, somebody. I'm excited. That's my word. Y'all know it by now. I'm excited. I am excited to be alive, to see my family one more time. Amen? Because we know God is first. We learn what second? Family second. Y'all remember that, right? All right. So I, I'm grateful to God to be able to wake up and see my family. Amen? And know that we're all here and doing well. Not just my family at home, but my church family. I'm so glad to see all of you. And I'm thankful to those of you who have joined us today by way of YouTube on live stream. We give God praise for you. We give God honor for you. And we just want to thank God for your being. Whether you are a member of this ministry or whether you're not a member of this ministry, we thank God for your being. Amen. amen. We want to thank God today for, amen, for my dear brother, Brother Lewis Branch, amen. If you just lift that hand, amen. That's Sister Branch's husband, amen. Listen, let me tell you all this. If you don't know him, let me encourage you, get to know him. Um, and I'm not saying this because he's sitting here. I, I would say it if his wife came by herself today. He's one of the 
very few humble men that I've encountered. And, and I don't know if he teaches classes on humility. <laughs> but if y'all want to know how to be humble, just look at his life. I, I I fell in love with him. Seriously. I fell in love with him. And, and, you know, it's hard for me to let him go. That's a great guy right there. Invited us into his home. All that good stuff. You know, some people don't invite you into their homes. Amen. Even the preachers. Some people don't invite the preachers into their homes. And you got preachers, too, that don't invite you into. Yeah, that's another story. But, you know, but I'm just being honest. But they opened their doors to us. And last Sunday, we went in there and we had a ball. And we're just grateful. So, Brother Branch, thank you for loaning and allowing your wife to be here with us. Yes, sir, yes, sir my brother. She's an angel. She really is. She's, she's, she's an angel. Amen. Brother Warren, I thank God for you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, you got smile. You got smiles in places I hadn't seen them in a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But but I tell you what, Sister Flo got that pool. Sister Flo got that pool. She got that pool. She got that pool. What you mean, Pastor? She got that pool. Anyt anytime she can get she can get her, her her friend to go and clean up in South Carolina, she got that pool. What you say? Cause I heard about that stuff in South Carolina, man. That 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 junk up there in that yard, man. What you say? It's got to be love to make you go up there and do it. Amen. Amen. I'm just thankful for him. I, I love him, Sister Gail. God bless you. And Sister Gail, this Sister Flo, this is this your grandson? That's Warren. So, well, what you say? What's your name, young man? Imari. All right. Now I would have asked his daddy, but he looked like he's at least 18, so he can speak for himself. Amen. So, Brother Imari, we want to thank God for you as well, being a part of us today. Amen. Brother Mike Petticone over there. That's our dear friend and Brother Mike. Amen. Amen. We bless God for you, man. Hey, I like that sweatshirt. Is that a 2X? That's a 2X sweatshirt? Yeah. Check it out for me. If it's 2X, I'm going to get it from you. I give you my coat. I take that one. Amen. 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 We come on this side. Amen. Javon, you well? You look good, man. You look good. Shanice, good to see you. Gloria, good to see you. All of the members, it's so good to see. Amen. Now, let me get this. Th hold on. Let me let me get my papers out. No, I don't have them up here. Brother Lou, give me, give me. What's your name, dear? Tanya, that's it. I saw the papers yesterday, and I gathered them up and put them in a folder. Sister Tanya, we bless God for you coming back with us again. Amen. Either there was something good you loved going on over here, or Brother Lou got that pool. Amen. Amen. <laughs> She said, no, he ain't. no, I'm just kidding. Amen. Brother Lou, good to see you. Love you, man, from the heart. Faith Church, I want you to keep in prayer. Continue to pray with Sister Taronda. She sent a message, and I'll read it to you momentarily. But I want you, we have a new prayer request. I want you to please stay in prayer with the Murray and the O'Brien family. Please do. Sister Murray's smiling this morning on the outside. But I want y'all to do me a favor please. Let's love on her. Her nephew that she loved dearly passed away on last night. And yeah, so let us be compassionate and before we be sympathetic, let's be empathetic. Amen? Because a lot of times we can be sympathetic but not empathetic. We need to put ourselves in the other's place. So whatever, Sister Murray, we can do for you. I know Bermuda is a long way for her. And I know I can't get no passport in two weeks. but <laughs> I can get one in two weeks. If I make a same-day appointment. What you say? Girl, that sounds good. Might have to go where? There ain't nothing wrong with that. I like going to Miami. Go two days in advance. Walk on South Beach, amen. But whatever we need to do. We are there for you. I want you to know that. And I remember meeting Mervyn. No, that's, that wasn't Mervyn we met. No, that was Morris. Amen. I remember meeting Morris. Amen. Amen. Not Mervyn. 
but bless God, her, she has a great family. Amen. I also want you to keep in prayer, amen, Sister Majita's father, as he continues to heal um, and come through um, what he has been going through. Keep the branches in your prayers. Um, let's keep Carol Haynes in your prayer. That's Javon's Aunt Mother Harris's daughter. She called me about a week ago. She asked us to keep her on our prayer list because she contracted the RSV virus. I believe that's what it's called. I'm not making up names. Amen. And she had a, a very hard time breathing. So let us keep her in prayer. Let's keep Brother Tyron in prayer. Met him this morning. He was just telling us about how the enemy is trying to attack him. Amen. Now, if there's any more deaths that we don't know about or have not heard about or that you passed maybe tr almost to turn 50 in two days and forgetting about, y'all let me know. Yeah. Amen. Sister Taronda says, good morning. I would like to send my heartfelt thanks to all those who supported me and my family and still is, we still are in our time of grieving. I appreciate all of you from the heart. And she said, please let the church know that I will see them soon. I hope she's watching. I probably shouldn't have gave them that statement yet. Amen. She'll laugh on that. She'll know what it means. She says, also, my apologies to all that came to the viewing, but I wasn't there because I had to leave due to an issue with the church where the service would be held, and I was called to meet with the pastor. So she says, again, I'm sincerely sorry, and thanks from my heart. So, amen. So, we, we accept all of that. It wasn't even necessary to apologize, but we accept that, Sister Taronda and your family, and we pray God will continue to move in your lives. Amen? Amen. amen. Some good news. Um, Finance Ministry, I have a check here for you from Mother Wilson, so let's make sure that you get that. She sends her love offering every quarter in honor of her son, who was a part of our ministry for a brief time until his passing. Brother Eddie Wilson. So I um, want you to make sure you get that. She sent me my birthday card, too, and I'm grateful for that. A um, couple things before you leave today. Ladies, you, you all are going to do the Faith Link name pool before we leave today. Um, we want to make sure we'll do that right after the offering. We'll get that done. Um, the blessing. As you all know, two weeks ago now we suffered a break-in. Um, in the sanctuary, and of course, you know, two iP I meant one iPad, two computers, and a safe was taken. So the other day, on Friday it was, um, I had one key to the file cabinet because the other key was in the safe, and I went to Noel's lock and key around the corner and asked him to make two copies of the key for the file cabinet. And... I didn't know where I was going to put them when I made them. I just know we needed them. Um, nevertheless, while there, I shared with him. I said, he said to me, he said, you don't have to take it off your key ring, Pastor. Leave it on. He says, we could make it from there. And I apologized to him. And I said, yeah, I wouldn't even be in here. But we had a break in at the church. I told him what happened, what someone took, the safe and all that. And he went to look for the keys by number so he could make them. And he couldn't find them. So he went and got his father-in-law, who's the owner. And he told him he couldn't find them. Father-in-law comes out. He looks at me, and he said, what did you say your name was? I said, Eric Jackson. He said, I pastor the church. I'm a, no, I said, I pastor Faith Church at Jacksonville. And he said, where is that located? I said, right around the corner. You guys have changed our locks out for us about a year or two ago. Um, and I said, and we've actually been dealing with you over 20 years. I said, because when I was in Dinsmore pastoring, you all came and changed all the locks for us there. So I said, technically, you all the only ones we've dealt with. He asked his son, his son-in-law, that's who George was, he said, he said, um, George, he said, did such and such company, I don't remember the name, did they ever call back with an interest in this Gary TL safe? He said, no, I hadn't heard nothing else from him. He said, all right, well, it's going to be donated. He looked at me, he said, we're donating you an 800-pound safe for your church. And he said, we will be there to deliver it free of charge on Monday between 1 and 2 o'clock. If the thief is watching, move that. Amen. <laughs> you know, move, move that one. You move, you move that one, you, you can get everything else we got. If you tote that out. But 
you know, I'm, I'm grateful because I didn't go asking. I went to make copies of keys, and we got a blessing in the midst. That lets us know God still has his hands on us. And it, it, is, it is a much better safe. It is a heavy-duty safe. It is one that we don't have to anchor to the ground unless we just choose to. But then you got to get somebody with some good tools to go through all that steel to get it on the ground. Hey, remember, Lou said he got the tool. No, I'm <laughs> But no, um, so I'm grateful for that. Um, and I, from the looks of it, you are too. Amen. There is a word from God today. Amen. I'm going to ask my wife to come, if she will. The beautiful Lady LaCharles Jackson is going to come, and she's going to bless our hearts. I've asked her last week to sing a song, but the Spirit didn't lead. But this week, I, the Spirit is beckoning for her to come and sing what God has for me. It is for me. And as she's coming, I want to say to every one of you in here that what God has for you in 2024, don't you let nobody, I want you to hear this, don't you let nobody stop you or block you. Don't be disrespectful to those who may try. Love them. Honor them. Don't get arrogant. Don't get haughty. Don't get conceited. Don't get prideful. Stay like Brother Branch. Stay humble. And my Bible says that if you will humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due time. So whatever is for you, it is for you. And nobody, nobody, Somebody shout, nobody. nobody. Nobody can take it away from you. Amen. As Minister LaCharles comes after she has sang, the trumpet will sound. Amen. For the word of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. And I just want you to worship God with us as she sings this song. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We love you, Lord.
hands together. Bless Amen. You, if you will stand to your feet as the trumpet of God sounds, as the word of God prepares, prepares to be proclaimed in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. There is a word. Amen. Father, we bless you, Father. We thank you right now, God. It is in the name of Jesus that we come to you asking you, Lord, to have mercy upon us Lord God we know now who you are and we know what you are in our life and for that today we tell you thank you God we know father that we could not make it without you we realize Lord that without you on our side we wouldn't be where we are so God thank you now, Lord, as we stand before all of your people today to give the word of the new year, I pray, Father, that every person in this place will heed to your word, will hear what the Spirit says to the church. Because, God, truly, at this time, it is a word in season. It is a rhema word that we all need to hear. And God, now anoint me to stand today and preach your word with a fresh anointing. God, now let me speak only what you have given me to speak, only what your word speaks. It is in the matchless, precious name of your dear darling son, Jesus, that we come to you with this petition and request. In Jesus' name, someone shout amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated today in the presence of God because today... I don't have a key scripture for you per se, but I do have three scriptures that we are going to look at because I'm going to be as brief as the Holy Ghost makes it possible. Amen. But as long as God wants me to. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be to the point. What I want to talk about today is a great sermon to start off this year. Um, I know many of you may have already made resolutions. Many of you may have already started some type of fast. Many of you may have already started disconnecting some things from your life, some people from your life, some places from your life. But as your pastor, as your brother, as your friend, I want to encourage every one of you in here this year to live a better year. So what God has given me to talk about this morning is simply, hallelujah, a new year, a new you with a new view. I know it sounds rhyming and all philosophical, whatever, but bypass that. Listen to the message. A new you excuse me, a new year, a new you with a new view. God has brought us from so many hard times. God has brought us through troubles in our life that he put us through, some we put ourselves through, but he's brought us through it year after year after year we have made commitments to God year after year after year we start thinking about commitments usually during the last month of the year and we start thinking within ourselves, what am I going to do different next year to make my year better and and no doubt brother Daniel we come up with so many I know I used to. We come up with so many things on what we're going to do um, and all this good stuff. And I think they call those, I said it a moment ago, they call those resolutions, right? Yeah. New Year's resolutions. That means uh, to anything that is, 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 is in the resolution state, it's resolved. I, I, I've come to this conclusion for my life that I need to do this. Well, you know, 
we make many resolutions and we don't stick to those resolutions. Let's be honest. I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Several years ago, um, Shanice, I made a resolution that I was not drinking no more Cokes or Sprites and all of that. And I did very good for six months. I'm serious. I did excellent for six months. And all of a sudden, the old devil got in the way. Sister Dana and tricked me. No, he didn't trick me. I tricked myself. Because I went and ate some Mexican food with my wife and son, some tacos and all that good stuff. And had some queso cheese with it and all that with the tomatoes and sour cream. And I knew like a dummy that that wasn't right. But I eat it anyway. And then I'm sitting inside of Tijuana Flats and I had to have something to drink. I started out with a water. And then I had to go back and ask for a Coke so I could burp. That's my excuse. And anybody ever, you ever made that excuse before? I need a Coke so I can burp. Loaded it with ice. You still ain't gonna get a good burp with ice. You gotta do it hot and all. Yeah, we, we know how to do it. But I just wanted me a Coke, and you know what happened? There it was, picked it back up. I didn't carry out what I resolved to do. We need to make, and I shared this with us some years ago, we need to stop making resolutions and start making revolutions. What is a revolution? A revolution is a change. We need to start making changes and not promises. When you make promises, that's just your lips moving. But when you make changes, your actions have come into place. Okay? People can't see your promises, but people can see your changes. Oh, help, help me somebody. God hears your promises. And the Bible teaches us not to make vows to God and don't keep them. The Bible says it's better not to make one then to make it and not keep. So it, it's, it's better not to make a resolution than it is to make it and not keep it. But what God seeks for us to make is a revolution. He wants us to make a change. So here it is. God, watch this. God has changed the year from 2023 to 2024. If you're still living, he changed it for you. Now, he has given you a new what? Year. Let's look at Romans 8 and 18 very quickly. I'm going to be straight to the point, y'all. This is, this is going to be preschool teaching. If you miss it, shame on you. A new year. Somebody say, thank God for a new year. Look what Romans 18 says. 8 and 18 says, the Apostle Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings. Now, when you see present sufferings, I want you to go back to December 31st, 2023, and everything prior. At this point, it's your past. But last year, it was your present. And Paul says in this particular verse, and I want to relate it to what we're talking about, that I consider that our present sufferings, and what Paul was actually saying is the stuff we're going through in this world is not compared to what's awaiting us in glory. That's what he was saying. But I want you to see this in the aspect that Paul says even to us here, our present sufferings, your 2023 is nowhere near to be compared to what your 2024 is going to be like. Seriously. Now, that's not saying that you're not going to experience any death. That's not saying you're not going to experience any losses. That's not saying that you may not you you, you may not you, you may you may not lose a job. That's not to say any of that. It, it's not to say that your your car may not get wrecked. It may it's not to say you may not get evicted. Pay your bills, you won't. But it's not to say that. These things can happen to you and you can still have a better year. 
And it's the last part of our sermon topic that is going to help you to have a better year. Because watch this. It's how you view it. Hello, somebody. It's how you view it. If you think 2024 is all about you, then you are already messed up. Every year God gives you, every day God gives you, every month he gives you, every week he gives you, it's never about you or me. Can I be honest? It's all about him. Every breath you breathe, him. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory of that will be revealed in us. Will you give me that in the message translation? Evangelist, also look what he says. Paul says, that's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. <laughs> if I can give you my translation, I would say it like this. There is nothing in 2024 Excuse me, there's nothing in 2023 that's going to make my 2024 bad. I'd say it that way. I can't compare it because what's happened is done. I can make it better. Watch this. I can make it better if I change my view. You know, y'all know people, y'all know people pay to go to conferences like this to hear this. People pay $299 a, a, a book and thousands of dollars for the entry fee to go hear just what you're hearing right now. And this is free. Amen. It ought to be free anyway, everywhere. Change your view and your year will be fantastic. This is what I believe. If God took care of us, y'all got to hear this well, because this is going to teach a lot of you some things that you probably never knew. If God took care of us in 2023 for 31,536,000 seconds, if he took care of us for 525,600 minutes, if he took care of us 8,760 hours, if he took care of us 52 weeks, and if he took care of us 365 days in 2023. Now, there, there's not an element of time not covered. If he took care of you and me in this manner, what makes you think 2024 is by any means going to get out of his hands? Oh, I got news for you. Not only did he take care of you 2023 like this, he took care of you in 2022 like this, 2021 like this, 2020, 2019, and so forth and so on. Some of us in the 40s, some of us in the 50s, some of us in the 60s, some of us in the 70s, some of us in the 80s, some of us in the 90s. If he did it then, what makes it impossible for him to do it now? And I've always shared this with us. If God didn't need our help getting us to this year, he don't need our help getting us through this year. Oh, my God. Lord, have mercy. All you got to do is stay in his presence. Do what he tells you to do. God is the same, Hebrews tells us, yesterday, today, and forevermore. A new year. Somebody say, I want a better year. I want to look at this. Let's go to Ephesians 4. 22 through 24 because I want to talk about now our second point God's given you a new year but he's also given you a chance for a new you now before we start reading I, I want to say this to you every one of us in here can use some newness okay don't think that because you are saved you're holy you got a great 
voice to sing, to preach, to talk, to teach, to read, or you got degrees off the wall, you got more. What I said, y'all, here you go. You're going to hear it again. Probably hear it more times again this year, too. But you got more degrees on your wall than a thermometer got. You know what? None of that matters. That doesn't make you perfect. You can still use some help to be new, to be a better person. Because you know what? All of us, all of us, and I'm going to say it again, all of us have sinned. That's what Romans 3.23 says. And all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Now, listen to this. Have fallen, some still fallen. Okay? Short of the glory of God. We're missing the mark. So this particular point is for every one of us in here. This year, you need to become a better person in 2024 than you were in 2023. Be made brand new. There's a song that says, Lord, make me over. Make me over again. Some of us need to go before God and just say, God, put us on that potter's wheel. Lord, break me. There it is. Lord, make me. Lord, mold me. Lord, shape me to be what you want me to be. Because to be honest with you, a lot of us are a mess. I didn't say a lot of you. It's not what I said. I said a lot of us are a mess. You got preachers still messing up. I won't talk about the present situation or, or as we used to say in school, I won't talk about the current events. <laughs> I won't get political with it. But you got preachers still messing up. Why? Because we're a mess. And what we need to do when we realize the mess that we are, rather than fooling others and fooling ourselves, what we need to do is go before the will of God and say, Lord, put me back on that potter's wheel again. I need you to make me over. I don't know about you, but I want to be made brand new. David said in Psalm 51, created me what? A clean heart and renew in me what? A right spirit. That's what we need. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Y'all better hear this. Listen, you were taught, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church of, of Ephesus. He says, you were taught with regard to your what way of life? What way? Former. That means the way we used to do things, right? The way we used to live. See, when you're a Christian, you ought to have a former life. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have the same life. Oh, help me somebody. You cannot be a Christian and have the same life you had before you got converted. Prove it to you in Scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Now therefore, if any man be in Christ, what is he? He's a new what? Creature. He becomes new because you're now what? In Christ. Okay? Follow, follow where I'm going. You are now in Christ. So you were taught, Paul says, with regard to your former way of, of life, my sinful ways, to put off your what self? Old is the opposite of new. As long as I've been alive, put off your old self. You know what? You don't need counseling to know what your old self was. You don't need a class to know what your old self was. You don't need to sit down and, and fast to think about what your old self was because let me help you right quick. Though it may be embarrassing, though it may be shameful, and a lot of us probably got some pride, all we got to do is take a second and think about who we were. I don't need no help knowing what I was. I need some help getting to where I'm trying to get to. That's what I need. And you know what? Every one of you sitting in here, me, what? Well, <laughs> Not everybody's mean, but let me say this. Some of you are mean. Some of you got nasty ways. Oh, excuse me, let me rephrase. Some of us are mean. Got to change that pronoun. Some of, some of us, because if I don't, I'm going to be on TV. Listen, some of us are mean. Some of us got nasty ways. Some of us are hateful. Some of us are foolish. You know some things you've done. You know all the things you've done. Matter of fact, you know, the Holy Ghost does a good job removing some stuff. He really does. But you know what? You don't remove it all. 
God has to keep us reminded of who we were. See, we're Christians now. We're, we're, we're believers now. Do you know you once was an unbeliever? Well, Pastor, I've always believed. Yeah, but your actions didn't always show it. Yeah. You can shout hallelujah. That don't mean you're saved. It's about how you're living. Brother Tyron, who we met this morning in the get, um, in the Wawa, he asked us to pray for him, was telling me about how the devil would get on him. And he said, bro, you just don't know how the devil would get on me. And he said, that's why I always tell people, you can't judge people by what they're driving. And, you know, as I was walking back to the car, I thought about it. When it comes down to living this Christian life, it's not what you're driving, but it's who's driving you. Can I say that again? It's not about what you're driving. It's about who's driving you. Who's your motivator? God ought to be your driver. <laughs> God ought to be the one pushing you. God ought to be, God ought to be the one. We want the best car so we can ride around here and I don't want the best car. I want the best life so I can live up there with him. And the only way I'm going to get that is I got to be brand new because look what it says. You were taught to put off your what? Old self. Somebody say put off your old self. Why do we need to put this old self off? There's something happening to it, y'all. The old self is being corrupted. Do y'all see this? By its what? Deceitful desires. There's a point God gave me this morning on the way here. I don't know if my wife saw me grab my phone, but I had to start typing as I, oh. Well, ain't but one police officer in here, and he got to go back with me, so ain't nothing he going to do. Amen. Right. Huh? We out of his jurisdiction anyway. Amen. All right. Well, that sounds good to me. Amen. <laughs> but <laughs> I was typing my note in my phone that the Lord was speaking to me as we were heading here. But I, I'm, I, I'll tell you about it in a minute. But it kind of goes with this right here where we're, our, our, our sinful, our old nature is being corrupted by its deceitful desires deceitful these things you're desiring are deceitful they're not permanent they're not eternal they're temporary temporary we're killing each other over temporary things but yet Jesus died for our eternity what's more important to you am I making sense I sound like I am I'm getting almost resaved myself just by talking amen so if I'm feeling it, you ought to be feeling it. Amen. Verse 23, look what it says here. It says, to look at this. You were taught. Well, go back because I, I, I want to I go to English class right quick so you can see all this. You were taught. Let's, let's stop right there. Okay. You were taught with regard to your old life. Okay. You were taught. You see that? Now, let's go to verse 23. To be made new. Y'all got it? You were taught, comma. Everything else in the middle of that is predicated. Th this, this statement here is predicated on everything that was said prior. But it's a continuation of you were taught. <sighs> Tell them I'll teach third grade English. Listen. To be made new. Y'all see this? To be made what? Somebody shout new. new. Somebody say I want to be new. This is what it's about. You already got a new year. Now what about a new you? We are told, Brother Warren, to be made new. Well, well let me go get me some new clothes. I just told Isaiah, Maxine, this is so crazy. When I was back at First Missionary, and I told some of y'all in the church how it was like a fashion show. You remember that? The preachers, the deacons. All the men had to have suits, brand new suits. G used to go to GQ, uh, uh, all these different places. Male ego, Stacy Adam. I'm uh, not Stacy Adam. What's the on stage? Anybody remember on stage used to be a gateway. Um, Mr. Kicks, um, Ice Man, Brothers 2000. That that's your current. But oh man, we used to go. Oh yes, sir. I know Brother Lewis can do it too back there. Listen, we, I, 
look, Daniel, they wasn't giving me as a musician at my home church. Hey, they wasn't giving me back then, but like 250 just to play the organ, come to rehearse and do all. Never asked for anything, just what they chose. Rather than me putting that up somewhere, saving it, I'm trying to keep in with them. I'm taking the little 250 you done gave me. I'm spending 170 out of it to go get me a little old cheap $99 suit. Buy me a shirt. Buy me a tie set. And every maybe once a month, get me a new pair of shoes because I want to look like them. Come to find out, they were looking new and fresh every Sunday. The problem was they weren't spending the money I was spending. I wasn't paying no attention that some of their suits were the same suits. They just changed shirts and ties. Yeah, I'm wasting all my money with a whole new suit. Wait a minute. So I stopped the game, and I realized this is the fashion show, and it's breaking me. What are you saying, Pastor? Some people try to change part of themselves on the outside and try to fool people by the way you look. But it's the inside that you need changing. Because, see, let me help you. Starting on the outside is not going to do any changing of your inside. Did y'all catch me? Did you catch me? Just because you don't want to drink no more don't mean you're getting holy. A lot of people stop drinking not because they're holy. A lot of people stop drinking because they're sick. A lot of people stop drinking because they don't want to get sicker. A lot of people stop drinking because they realize it was nasty all along. But if you stop drinking on the outside and don't do nothing with the inside, it won't be long before you go back to what you used to do. So the changing needs to take place. Watch this now. In the attitude of your mind. You know what that word, attitude of your mind, it, it comes to one word. Your, you need to be made new. Watch this. In the way you think. That's the attitude of your mind. Come on, y'all. The way we think. I'm going to tell you some things in this next point about thinking as soon as I come out this verse. You need to be made new. Put your old self up. The stuff y'all used to do last year, the stuff, excuse me, I keep, I keep getting these pronouns wrong. The stuff we used to do last year, let's stop doing it. You envision yourself sitting on the front porch smoking a blunt. Envision yourself this year when you get off work sitting on your porch reading the Bible. Because half the time, that's the reason why folks are sitting on their porch smoking a blunt anyway, because they're not working. Yeah. I heard somebody say facts, so I know what I'm talking about. I ain't got nothing else to do today. I might say, I can't smoke. No, you need to get them to go to work. That's less time you have to smoke. And by the time you go work an eight to ten hour shift, you're going to be so tired when you come home, you only want to roll it up. Matter of fact, you might already have it rolled. You don't want to fire it up. Pastor, you're just saying that because you don't smoke. No, I'm not. I'd be saying it if I was smoking weed. But you wouldn't know if I was smoking weed anyway because I'm crazy anyway. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother Lou, they wouldn't know the difference. I <laughs> Pastor, your lips dark. No, my wife got dark lipstick on. I kissed her. <laughs> no. I got to keep you woke and humorous. Amen. Amen. So everybody you see with dark lips, don't start assuming they smoke weed. Don't do that because pastor said that. Y'all going to start going around the church. Look at who got dark lips. <laughs> pastor, five people on the left side of church, dark lips. Well, you know, they also said something about the ones that's real pink inside. Listen, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. No. Say, somebody just said it. That's that drinking, that alcohol, and burn it up. Listen, to be made new. Pastor Hall's going to do like Miles Monroe. Ooh, ooh, and do what he do. <laughs> to be made new in the attitude of your. 
This is where your newness needs to take place, y'all. Well, I'm changing churches. They play too much over there. I need the word. Pastor laughed too much. You was getting the word. You just want to go somewhere you can hide out. People that usually leave our church, small church, they usually go to the bigger churches. They like to play laser tag. Mm-mm. Some of y'all know what I mean by laser tag. If you ever been to a laser tag, you can't find nobody in there. Yeah, yeah. But I'm okay with that. That's fine as long as you're growing. Okay, but if you're just going, stay where you stay put. Why? It's a new year. I need to change my car. No, that's the, that, that's the least of your worries. Because should something happen to you without changing your inside, funeral home got a new car to put you in. They do. Yeah, they got they got some new ones. Nice too. They got some now. They don't even have to get out and open the door. They just press the button from the inside, and the back of the door just and the casket on the little thing it comes out. Seriously. Well, I need to change. I need to change apartments. No, listen at this. Change your 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 heart. Change your mind first and then you'll discover just how important those other things really were not to change am I making sense to anybody this is a new year y'all and y'all to be honest with you we should be more on fire for the Lord at the beginning of the year but I'm okay with what you, where you are because I know there's more to come okay so to be made new in the attitude of your minds give me verse 24 then I gotta hurry up and get God's people out of here and uh oh there it is so, and to put on a what? You can't put on a new self till your mind has changed. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Now, I'll tell y'all a little secret, a little more transparent. The other morning, my wife and I got up to go get some coffee. She didn't even know this part. Usually, we'll get up. I, I wash my face. I brush my teeth. I usually take my rag and kind of wipe around your neck. You know, even though you're sleeping good, it might be cool in your house. Every now and then, that neck be like this when you're sleeping. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sweat a little bit. Usually, you know, I'll, I'll hit it with my rag, but I, I had to hurry and get my coffee that morning because I had some work to do. I got on up, brushed my teeth, washed my face, forgot to wash the neck, forgot to go under the arms. Seriously, because I, 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 well, I, I ain't, ain't that bad. I, you know, hey Amen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Went in the bathroom, looked at the deodorant, forgot it. Watch where I'm going. That's why I use Mitchum. You can go a day or two or three. Listen, hey amen. Teach y'all about that. Anyway, um, went in there. Ain't put no water on my neck, no water under my arms. Go and put my tank top on. Put on my little sweat jacket to go outside. I grab a cologne bottle and start spraying. <laughs> Y'all feel what I'm doing? Bruh, you is freshening up the outside. And you ain't do nothing with all that that's up under them clothes. That's how people live their life. They spray some Holy Ghost on the outside. They spray. Yeah, That's the ones who go to church and get hit by the Spirit. You know, they say the Holy Ghost hit me or the Holy Ghost jumped on me. <laughs> When, when you going to file a complaint against the Holy Ghost? That's assault and battery. If it keeps hitting you, jumping on you. No, no. It needs to live in you. So now here's, here's, here, 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 here's, a, here's a hygiene lesson. Because I used Mitchum all day long, even when I came back home and took my shower before we left, I still forgot to put the deodorant on. Guess what? Went all the way, came back home that night, showered again. Guess what happened the next morning? I don't smell a thing. I almost skipped it again on purpose. You know why? Because, listen at this, because the chemicals that are in it have gotten into the chemistry of my skin. When the Holy Ghost is in you, oh, come on, somebody. You don't have to put it on every day. 
And the Holy Ghost needs to get deep down in you. Sister Flo gave me some deodorant, some no, some powder. Some arm and hammer, I think it was. The, said, bond, the, the golden bond, that was it. Golden bond. And she used to tell me, she'd say, put this up under your arm with your deodorant. She'd say, it's going to work. She say, and you won't get them stains on your white shirts either. Girl, you had something, you had something going. You knew what you was talking about. It worked. Because watch this, because I got it in me. I used it enough to get it in me. So even if I skip a day or two, somebody just missed it. Put on the new self. Created to be like who? God in true righteousness and what? Hold. This is what you should be striving for in 2024. Y'all know what? Folk ought to get. Now I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say y'all this time because I can't I can't I can't put myself in this one because I don't believe in deceiving people. But folk ought to be tired of deceiving people. Folk ought to be tired of being false. You know what? Be true to people. Be true in your marriage, in your family, in your relationships, in your business dealings, in your church dealings. Be true. Be like God in what kind of righteousness? True righteousness. True righteousness is God's righteousness. In your spare time, read Romans 10, 1 through 3, and you'll see the righteousness that we are falling into now. It's one that we're creating ourselves. We have a system of righteousness. Well, if I just live this way, I'll see Jesus. If I just have a good heart, I'll see Jesus. Okay. You don't go to heaven with a good heart. You go to heaven with a changed heart. You go to heaven with a believing heart. With a converted heart. That's how you see Jesus. And holiness. That means set apart. You know, again, I won't get into the politics, but I heard somebody say that this 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 new famous bishop, well, he's not new, but he's this famous bishop should have never been in the place he was at. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, you, you're not gossiping with me, I'm not gonna laugh about it. Listen, he never should. <laughs> He never should have been where he was at. When you are holy, you are set apart. You are different. You don't go places that they go. You don't do things that they do. You don't listen to what they listen to. You don't act like they act. Because just as soon as you start associating with the unholy, You are the unholy. You ain't never seen God shaking his... Oh, let me... Somebody say a new year, a new you. I got three minutes to give you this one, a new view. Proverbs 23 and 7. Here it is. Remember, we talked about thinking. The Bible says that we have to change the attitude of our minds, which is thinking. Proverbs 23, 7. Thank you, Holy, Holy Father. Did I write, wait a minute, 23, did I give you the wrong verse? Hold on, I typed the wrong thing, I believe. Hold on, bear with your pastor. Mm -mm. I was rushing. Thank you, Lord. Give me King James, that's it. That's what I want on this one. For as he thinketh, that was it, in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Change how you think because you become what you think. Mm-hmm. Anybody caught that? You become what you think. 
What you choose to see, y'all got to hear this, determines your reality. A new view. What you choose to see becomes your reality. Follow me. You, somebody say me. You have the power to change your reality, church, by shifting your focus. People walk around and say, well, in all reality, I'm broke. You can change that reality if you shift your focus. You're not broke. You're just lazy and need to get up and go get a job. And if you got a job and you're paying all your bills and you're still broke, then you're not broke. Pastor Hall said it best just now. You're just temporarily out of funds. Toof. T-O-O-F. And God knows when you need more. Not more, but more. And you got to ask yourself this. When you do get a little extra, what do you do with that? Watch where I'm going. What do you do with the little extra you get? Do you put it up? For the rainy day? Or do you go get it and start buying all the unnecessary things just to say you got some money in your pocket? Then you're mad and wonder why God won't give you no more. Because you're not sowing the little that you have into something that's going to bring you more. Well, I'm not broke, Pastor. That ain't that ain't the situation. My my my, 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 my car, I just have the worst car in the world. Change your focus. You have a car. Somebody you just passed by walking. They got the worst car in the world. Because they walking. They tired when they get through. You just get out and go into the next spot. We got to stop complaining, y'all. If we look at the very familiar... Faith Church Scripture. Y'all know Faith Church got a very familiar scripture. What is it? Y'all ready? Romans 12, 2. Y'all, y'all, y'all heard about Romans 12, 1 through 2 so much last year, you ought to know it by heart. Look at Romans 12, 2. Look what it says. Do not what? Conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. There, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and what? When we read this, what I hear, I hear the Apostle Paul telling us that changing the way you think, watch this, changes your perspective, which changes how you act in the world. When your view is changed, your behavior changes. Paul's words are not new. Because when Jesus gave his first sermon on the mount in Matthew 4, changing our minds was his central theme in that sermon. Jesus challenged people to change their thinking because regardless how many times you read the Bible, if, listen, if your mind doesn't change, you will simply, listen, impose your biases and your labels on the words you read. Uh-oh, did y'all hear that? If your mind don't change. Anybody ever read the Bible and when you got through, you said, I don't agree with that? Anybody ever had somebody read the Bible to you right in your face? And you said, yeah, but I, I, that, that, I, that's what Paul said. I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't believe in that. That's because you've not been changed. You are still selfish you. You want it your way, and you don't want it God's way. You got to change your mind. I like how one version puts Romans 12 and 2. That one version I read says this, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. There it is, by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. You don't know God's will till you think better. Think different. You don't know what's pleasing and perfect to God until you change your view. This is what the Lord gave me this morning while I was riding. We often don't have thoughts because oftentimes we don't think. Let that say, let that soak for a minute. We often don't have thoughts because we don't think. 
You ever went up to anybody and said, what's your th- what, what you think about? What's your thoughts? Oh, child, I ain't thinking about nothing. You should be. Are you perfect? Is your life where you want it to be? Do you want to go further in life? Then you need to be thinking on something. Well, I ain't got to share with them what I'm thinking. Sometimes they're the angel God sent to you to get you where you need to go. What if I would went around that corner the other day, hush mouth. Thank you, sir. Just can you make me two keys? Thank you. Got a whole safe because I shared what I was thinking. Don't be afraid to share your thoughts. Some people usually allow others who are unimportant, this is going to bless somebody, and uninstrumental in their future to think for them. Let me repeat that because there should have been some oohs. Some people allow others who are unimportant and uninstrumental in their life to think for them. Why are you being influenced by somebody that's not even important? Well, what, what, what makes them important, Pastor? Are they a believer or an unbeliever? Should that matter? Sure it does. Psalm 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. What do you say? Nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of who? The Lord. You ought to be listening and influenced by people who love God just as much as you do. And these very people I'm talking about who don't think, if they do have their own thoughts, they're often too ashamed or embarrassed to share them. Why? Because some of us are thinking deceitful things, corruptible things. As we think, and I'm getting ready to close, we change the physical nature of our brain. Did you hear that? As you think. You ever heard where they say reading helps um, um, helps you to avoid possible dementia? For Alzheimer's, reading reading helps you to con- what what is it? Let me see. Reading helps you to focus. Reading is good for your brain. Thinking is good for your brain. As we consciously direct our thinking, we can wire out toxic patterns of thinking and replace them with healthy thoughts. Twenty, twenty four. I don't want my thoughts sick. I want my thoughts healed. I want healthy thoughts. All 2024. When you think, you build thoughts. And these become physical substances in your brain. Faith Church, a new year. As your pastor, and if y'all want me to show you scripture, I'll provide it for you. As your pastor, I have every right to require of you to let me see a new you. Hebrews 13, 7, if you want to see it. And go on down to verse 17 with it. I have every right to ask you, let me see a new you. Well, I want to see a new pastor. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. I want to see a new you. I want y'all to be dedicated, committed this year. Let's do different things here this year. This year marks 10 years that we've been in this building. It does. And somebody said, well, shouldn't y'all have your own building by now? You know what? I'm not worried about an own building. This is ours until God do different. But you know what I'm grateful for? I'm grateful for the stuff, the, the ability that God has to sustain us in this building. We always want to obtain versus realizing that he sustained. He kept us here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This year, let's do better things. This year makes 10 years. This year makes this this month and year, January 28th, will make 21 that I've been pastoring. January 9th in two days will make 50 years that I've been living. And y'all know what? I don't want my 50th year to start out without a new me. 
and without a new view. When I turn 50, I know they say 50 going to give you a new view, but I'm talking about the voluntary view. The voluntary view. I'm going to be 30 at 50, and I, I'm going to claim that. Come, Pastor, uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Isaiah, come on, give the invitation. Father, thank you now for this word that has been dropped on the hearts of your people today. I thank you now for using me to speak to them. And I thank you, Father, for making me as brief as the Holy Spirit wanted and as long, keeping me here as long as you wanted. And I believe today someone has received your word. Father, I bless you now. I thank you. And I ask now that this word will not fall on deaf ears, but this word will be shared with the world at large somewhere because somebody needs to know this year they need to start off new with a new year, a new them, and a new view. It is in Jesus' name I pray this prayer. Every heart say amen. 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 Pastor Isaiah will come before you following that evangelist halls, and y'all give us a few minutes, and we're going to get ready to get out and go enjoy this day with each other. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Can we all stand? Amen. It's a new year, everyone. It's a new year. As I look around, I see all of your smiling faces. But one day, you won't be here anymore. One day, I won't be here anymore. I look back there at all the uh, pioneers of faith. We've lost 21 people. Who's to say this year might be my year or your year? One thing I can say is death will always be a constant life will be will, will vary but death is a constant so have eternal life eternal life that's a special thing even after your body decays or before they burn you up you'll live forever I encourage you today choose eternal life if you believe that your heart is in good standings with God you may sit down Father God in the name of Jesus I just want to tell you thank you for this opportunity God I hope I hope that everyone here is satisfied God if they're nervous about it God move that away that's a trick of the enemy. Forgive us, God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you. I need you to serve. It is, it is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to serve. Tell your neighbor you are, you are important. I need you. Amen, amen. I just want everyone to uh, pray for my sister, um, Sister Hardy. Thank you. Um, she's in intensive care in ICU, and I'm praying that um, they will, um, she had a, a seizure, so they had to, like, put her to sleep, her brain to sleep, and they had to put a tube, uh, breathing tube on her. And um, they're supposed to meet with the family tomorrow to see um, if they're going to do anything else. So y'all just pray for my sister, Sister Hart. Amen. Thank you, Father. Well, Father God, in the name Forgive of Jesus, me. we thank you once Forgive again, God, for your word, God. God, we pray right now, God, that everyone receive your word and heard your word, God. Now, God, we ask you, Lord, to bless the offering. We ask you to bless it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Stacy and she's on break. Stacy on break. No, hey man. <laughs> hey man, just the bridge will be in the back. I thank y'all so much. Um Amen. What I want to do right quick, amen, before you all leave out of here, um, my bag is in the back. So y'all got to work with me. Everybody here that had a December birthday, tell the truth, shame the devil, make it mad. If you had a birthday in December, please stand on your feet if you are here and you are a member of this church. Amen. Faith Church just wants to bless you. Amen. With your love gift. It's only $10, but it's enough. Amen, amen. For those that have had birthdays in this month, Mama Therese, we love you, dear. Sister Stacy, your birthday was December the 15th. Yeah, I had to make sure because you, yeah, you try to get two of them in a year. I'm just kidding. Amen. Now, we have some other. That's right, Brother Lou over on that side. Amen. I'm coming. I need this walk. Don't walk. Let me walk. Amen, because I promise I ain't going to walk it later. Amen. Amen. Brother Lou. Man, I like that shirt. Is that 2X? Ah, can we add to it? That's a nice one, man. Cut the back open and I'll fool everybody. <laughs> Any other December birthdays? Y'all got to help the brain. Zion? Yes. Zion was a December birthday. You, you utilize that for Zion. Amen. He was on our list. Amen. Patience, yes, it's the patience. We'll make sure patience get hers as well. If anyone going to be seeing her, well, you know what? I can go by the house when I leave. I'll go right by the house up the street. Anyone else? All right, so I know there's some more on our list that's just not here. Um, I, Minister LaCharles, if you will make sure that we, oh, I'm, you know what? I'm just cuckoo. I didn't realize. Somebody just put it there. Amen. Because I promised that bag wasn't there. When I came out, so I'm really not cuckoo. Amen. God is good all of the time. And all the time, God is good. Thank you for spending your time with us. Sister Dana is going to be, um, you want him to come over there, Sister Dana? Okay. We do have forms. Have, thank you. We do have forms at the back of the uh, church where um, all the information sheets are. Where um, once you have your prayer partner, just um, feel free to connect with them immediately after worship and gather the information so that you can um, start that process. Um, I am just writing down a couple more names, and um, I, I'll have the drawing drawing ready. Absolutely. For the ladies, right? Um, yeah. Yes, we yeah. have uh, two drawings. So one drawing the first set will be for the ladies and then the second set will be for the um, men that sign up as amen. well. Amen. All right. Amen. So you're going to, we're gonna, we're doing this before or after? Um, uh, I will be drawing the names momentarily okay. in, um, in about a few seconds. Okay. All right. Y'all bear with us. Y'all bear with us. All right. So I'm ready for the ladies names and let's see here. Good I'm going to gather two names here. And uh, w would a volunteer like to help me? Amen. Can we get someone? Amen. All right. All right. Amen. I'm so grateful to y'all. Thank you, Lord. And y'all pardon me while she's Okay, gone. the first name is Zanetta. Amen. And the second name would be Sister Latoya Rafford. Latanya. Latanya. <laughs> thank, thank you for the correction. <laughs> Amen. So those two will be prayer partners, correct? Yes, okay, that's, there that's, you go. That's LaHoo. Amen. Latanya. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, my handwriting is bad. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Amen. The second one is Yvonne Morgan. Took his breath away. And Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Prayer partners. Amen. It's an opportunity to know somebody different. The first name is Sister LaShawes. Amen. And her, 
her prayer partner would be Dana. Hey. <laughs> Amen. At what rig, y'all? Y'all see she pull him out the boat. <laughs> First Hello. name, Sister Stacy McLeod. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, she she need this prayer partner. Her <laughs> prayer partner would be Miss Sister Maxine. Amen. <laughs> God hook God hooked her up with an angel. <laughs> I know it's oh it's already ready. Um, Sanaja is the first one. Sanaja, amen. And her prayer partner would be Sister Gloria Wood. Amen. Catch her before nine. <laughs> Gloria be in the bed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Janelle. <sighs> and your prayer partner would be Miss Sister Margaret. All right. I love to hear that. Yay. That's it for the ladies? Yes, now, I know we got more ladies, but that's all right. We're going to get there. They're going to see how fun it is. Sister Brenda Brandt said, where her name go? Oh, that's what it was. You were out when they were doing the sign-up sheets. That's what it is. Sister Brandt said, I need a prayer partner. So that's why it's important though, and, and that we make sure we sign up. We don't want no one left out that want to be a part. This is going to strengthen your relationships with God and each other. I promise you it will. So for the men. It's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. It would be beautiful. Okay, no, we're going to do no. the drawings for the men. No. And the first drawing for the men would be Dick and Ron. His prayer partner would be Pastor Pastor Halls. Pastor Halls. All right, Pastor Halls and Deacon Ron. Yeah, he put his first name on that. Didn't he? I'm sorry. He put his first name on that. Well, I, I did. I did the scripture. Okay, the first, the second drawing for the man would be Brother Daniel. And Pastor Isaiah. Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel. The third is Deacon Harley. And Elder Jesse. I didn't feel comfortable calling him. Deacon Rafford. And yours truly. Oh, oh man. All right. That's perfect. Awesome. Thank That's perfect right there. I amen. So, you. amen. So, if anyone else would like to sign up, we do have sign up sheets, and this is just part of the Faith Link uh, prayer partners. And you're welcome to sign up, and we're, we're happy to do additional um, name drawings um, in future Sundays. Please put add my name, and I, that's yes, my sir. fault. Amen. Absolutely. Please add my name to that list. Yes, Thank sir. you. Amen. Now, today, what we can do, those of you that did not get a chance to sign up, can they go ahead and sign up today, and then next Sunday they get their names drawn? Can we do that? Let's do that. Amen? All right. If all has been said, I want you all to please pardon me, and I was about to say this earlier. I I, I did not forget, Sister Sherilyn. I just had so much, I guess, at, at the time on my mind ready for the word, but definitely let's pray for Sister Hart and Mother Irma and Mother Banks, amen? Our usual prayer list, that doesn't change. If, if it changes, it's because we've given you good news, amen? Outside of that, if you hear the prayer list today, pray, keep praying until you hear change, amen? Keep, yes, Sister Kathy Johnson, that's right, amen? Let us stay in prayer with her that God will continue to move in her life, heal her body, and God, listen, can do anything but fail. Amen? Amen. And don't forget, let's pray for those families we asked in the beginning of our service. If all has been said and done, I look forward to seeing you all on Tuesday evening in Bible study. Yes, it's my birthday. Pastor, you going to be here? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No better place I'd rather be than in the house of the Lord. I have my blood work done that morning.
Somebody say, thank God. And three days later, I'm going to be checking that portal. And if that if that 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 pressure look right, y'all, I mean, I mean the pressure look great. If the, the if the cholesterol look right, can't tell y'all where I'm gonna eat at this weekend. Next week, I can't tell y'all. Oh, I gotta I gotta have one cheat. If the numbers look right, and I'm helping them look right too, Shanice, huh? Go on Saturday. Well, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I say the weekend. Yeah, I ain't gonna go Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I have work to do. Oh, amen. <laughs> but um, Shanice, I'm doing something good. I'm drinking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar every day in my bottle of water. And oh, I can't wait to see what them numbers gonna look like. Boy, they gonna be so surprised. The doctor gonna hug and probably kiss me on my cheek. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, apple cider vinegar and water. A tablespoon to an eight ounce glass. Yeah. Now, they, they don't want you to, listen, don't drink it by itself because it can harm your esophagus going down and do some terrible things to the stomach lining. But that apple cider vinegar, listen, y'all, it helps with your digestive, your, your, in your digestive system. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, it helps remove the fats in, the, in your, de, in your de, de digestive system. It doesn't allow the fats to stay in your system that long too long, well, they'll get into your bloodstream, and then you have all this cholesterol. Help you lose weight. Don't you? That's right, I've lost some. I just do a tablespoon. One tablespoon. Amen? All right, if all has been said, please come on, stand on your feet. We don't keep people this late, and y'all know that, but uh, we just have some things we need to do. Amen? And we need some people to help us, those of you who want to learn and those of you who have the heart to learn and will do everything you can to learn outside of church how to operate sound equipment, media equipment. We need some people to step to the plate. Now, we can, we can give you the basics, but we just can't give you the basics and then you expect the whole seminar. You got to be willing to learn this stuff because trust me, I haven't been to school to learn none of that. I watch somebody, and I YouTube University. I get my degree soon. <laughs> Amen. But it's worked. It's worked. Father, we love you. We thank you. You've given us this day, and it has been a grand time in this place, serving you with new faces, serving you as a new year, serving you as a new us, and God serving you with a new view. We're going to do that this year. And we're not making a resolution to do it, but we're making a revolution to do it. We are changing our minds on what we see and what we perceive. God, we want a better year. And I thank you now for the start of it right now already taking place. I ask, Father, that you will continue to build our ministry, that you will continue to build it through the word and not through friendship, but build it through the word. And let your Holy Spirit always be in charge here. And as we leave this place, never your presence. Give us traveling graces and mercies. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Every believer say thank God. Amen. Hug somebody. Love somebody.